The investigation into the fire that killed 12-year-old Olivia Bondi, 8-year-old Jackson Hamilton, and 6-year-old Lincoln Hamilton and their parents has turned up little in the way of possible causes. Officials report that the damage is too extensive to determine where it originated, but the heating system and the wood burner are ruled out as possibilities, and it may have been a space heater or smoking. But the story continues for another family member who doesn't understand. Meet Harley. When I pulled up to the residence, Harley was sitting near the burned remains of his old house. When I got out, he excitedly ran up to me and affectionately said hello. I made a few calls and discovered that Harley did, in fact, belong to the family that lost their lives in that fire. I couldn't, in good conscience, leave him there, waiting in front of the memorial, which now sits in front of what remains of the house. I found out that Harley is being looked after by some neighbors, but right now he doesn't have any permanent residence for the future. After a few more calls, I got the number to the grandmother of the children. She told me that she would send someone to get Harley, and said she's already taken in the other dog from the house. Relatives did show up and take Harley, but didn't wish to be on camera. They said they'd find a new home for this old guy, who looks soft and cuddly and has a demeanor to match. Chris Delcamp, WNWO News. That's awful. I don't know what, what these people are thinking about nowadays. Despicable. That's the word being used to describe the theft of 89 medallion units and 45 medallion rods here at the Wauseon Union Cemetery. The first time they took the entire staff and medallion, and the second time they came back and just took about 45 rods. Vandals struck not once, but twice, stealing medallions like these. Medallions put on the graves of military service members to honor their memory. It makes me ill. I mean, I, as I walked through here today, Looking again, I noticed um, that my third grade teacher, her husband's, was taken. The medallions represent all branches of military, and the graves in this old cemetery predate the Civil War in small town Ohio, where the pride of service is of the highest honor. None of this belonged to anybody but them, and it's just, it's just wrong. And so, too, is the memory of that service. A gentleman that I remember doing a story on earlier, and he was lost at sea. And, you know, his brothers and sisters are all gone, so that story is going to be gone. And, you know, they stole from him. Folks drove through today to check the graves of their departed heroes. I wonder why she, she wanted to come down and make sure that some of her relatives, that no stones or anything was damaged. And while it will cost money to replace the stolen pieces, the damage is largely sentimental. You and I and are standing here because they gave everything they had, you know, for our freedoms today. and and somebody was low enough to come and take something off their final resting place. Power lines strung across roads, trees blocking homes and driveways after what some are saying is the worst storm they've ever seen in Northwest Ohio. I was thinking if we don't get to a place of safety, we're going to die. Elaine Ashley finishes clearing debris from her front yard. She recalls the severity of the storm, which knocked out her power for two days. Sheets of rain came down so that you couldn't see and trees were falling down about us. I was able to get to the hospital and get into the underground parking lot. 73-year Finley resident David Woodward is still without power, running his home on a generator his son brought to him. We're not able to keep up with what's going on, so we don't know what one section of the town's doing during the day without power. The outage numbers peaking at 660,000 throughout Ohio, 90,000 in the northwest. We had some storms through Ohio in the past. We've never had a storm actually in AEP Ohio that has devastated us to this, this widespread nature. The cleanup efforts pressing forward despite the stifling heat as AEP crews work 24 hours a day to restore electricity. We're working 16 hour days, round the clock shifts, trying to get the poles put back in, working with tree crews, making repairs. AEP estimates they'll have 90% power restored to Finley by late this week. And while there's still a lot of work left to be done, David Woodward's resiliency is humbling as he shows the spirit of a lifetime Midwesterner while taking a powerful storm in stride. I think there's other people more important and we're able to keep living and stuff and that's the important thing. And 